Here we go, brand new music from Tegan and Sarah. It's called Hell from the new album Saint Hood. Tegan and Sarah are here at 100.5 The Peak, hanging out with us just for a few more minutes. Thanks, guys, for dropping Thanks by. For I really appreciate us. it. Uh, album Saint Hood, when does it come out? It's coming out on October 27th. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the first single right now is Hell, and you can buy it on iTunes. What are your favorite songs from the album? I think to play right now, my favorite is Paperback Head, and there's another one called Alligator, both Sarah songs. They're mm -hmm. just really different than anything we've ever played and I actually thought we're all really playing keyboards which is really strange i thought it was really interesting that you played uh soil soil from our last record which is maybe the shortest tegan and sarah song and hell which is potentially one of the longest tegan and sarah songs <laughs> so ever. we went from what is it tegan and sarah so it's like a minute and 19 seconds yeah, yeah. and then, and then, and then hell's like three minutes and yeah. 20 seconds or something. so we want we, we're showing our uh the versatility Time wise, for sure. As radio yes. goes, playing a minute long song is really weird. We can't do <laughs> anything. Really There's no nose picking really or back <laughs> visits or anything. I really did. I really did appreciate it. I I, w I worried that I insulted you when I said that I heard you playing Soil Soil on the radio. I don't live here, so I don't listen to the radio. Um, but when my mom picked me up from the airport at the beginning of September, we went to Home Depot, and when we were in the Home Depot parking lot, Soil Soil came on, and I was so flustered. I was like, "What is this? Is this this is Soil Soil?" Is this on the, my mom's CD player? And then she was like, it's the peak, they love you! And I was like, why are they playing Soil Soil? That's terrible radio. I, I need to call them. Don't play Soil Soil. And That's actually uh, what it says right under our call later, callers. Yeah. It's like terrible, terrible, terrible radio. Terrible radio. I love it. I just want to jump in here so and say that I'm really offended because it's my song. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, no, I'm teasing. I'm like, I'm teasing. Play soil, soil. I knew it it's was a really good song. Sweet. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> it's true. It's one of the least. And it's not on our. Songs. It is. It's beautiful though. It's I really a beautiful love song, it. but we never really play it live. But that's off our old good record. For you for do, you, do you like a song off Sainthood that you want to talk about? Oh yeah, I do. Um, well, I not just because Tegan picked two of my songs, but I really love a bunch of Tegan's material on this record. Like in a way that I ha maybe haven't loved her old songs, like Soil Soil. Um, I'm just teasing <laughs> Tegan. <laughs> I really love The Cure. It's probably one of my favorite songs to play, and I have a feeling it's going to be a single, so The Peak will probably play it, Tegan. Don't worry. I'm not worried. Yeah. No. I mean, I make the same amount of money whether it's a Sarah <laughs> single or it's a Tegan <laughs> single, so... <laughs> Which it's is true. none. It's, it's just none. Yeah. We're, a we're a democracy. No, I really love Tegan's material on this record, and they're definitely, I think, the most rock-friendly songs that we've ever done. Like, hell, obviously, there's a song called Don't Rush, which I think is really great. Someday, which we've been playing a lot of Tegan's, I think could also be a single. I mean, North Shore is like... Right out of like, it's true. Right out of the mid nineties, you're ready to like, go. You're like rock. ready to give the world a slap. I really am. I like the high energy stuff. Sometimes yeah. I feel like we, like all joking aside, our audience really grew on the last couple records, and so we're playing sometimes like to thousands of people, and it's hard to keep their attention. It's hard to play soil, soil. soil. It's hard to play soil, soil. <laughs> yeah. Like unless you're in a theater, That's you true. know. And we've been playing a lot of these clubs and festivals internationally, and so it just, I kind of, I think when I was writing Sainthood, I was sort of approaching it with this mentality of like I'm I'm in a band a right good, now. What, what, what songs would transition really well live? Which was what Chris yeah. Walla, who produced the record when we started writing demos, he said, "I want music that works for you guys in a live setting because you're a live band." So I think all the material works really well. Yeah, I think it's definitely a, a heavier record, more fast paced. That's I was going to ask you as well. Point: You are getting bigger, and you're going to be playing bigger, bigger venues. Yeah. Are, is that something that weighs on your mind? Are you playing shows that are bigger and bigger and bigger continuously? Eventually, G in place and the other right. larger Canadian the venues. The moon. moon. They're, they're <laughs> opening on the huge moon. amphitheater on the moon. I think uh, there was like a point on our last record. We did this big show um, at Austin City Limits, and I mean, go out on a limb and say there was like probably about fifteen thousand or twenty thousand people, and it was early evening, so it was really dark. It created this vibe sort of on stage that you were just playing to nothing but there was these photos we saw the vi like we got a copy the festival gives you a copy of your performance and we got on the bus and we didn't listen to it but we just watched it and there kept being these crazy shots like of, of this sea of people and it was a really big show for us and one of the things that really struck me about it was that we talked a lot still and I think one one of the biggest fears of us and our, our audience has been as the audience grows and as our shows get bigger that we're going to be less interactive with our audience mm -hmm. we're just going to get up there rock out and go home and that like an intimacy is lost yeah the, and the intimacy I don't think is lost when mm -hmm. we get when we get to the bigger shows I think it's only when people are drunk and crazy I think that's when we're like okay no talking Tegan and Sarah are tired they're old we want to go home you know but <laughs> when you're drunk and crazy no, when Tegan gets oh. super no like when the audience <laughs> is a little crazy you're just like okay no stories we're tired but um yeah like, no, I, I don't, like I'm not worried groups. about bigger I just want to yeah. make sure we stay I, th I just want to make sure that we still are making the music we want to that we're not doing anything that makes us uncomfortable Sarah and I are like 
borderline OCD and we're Virgo, so everything from like ad maps to tour announcements to what radio stations we go in to play. Like we're not we're not robots and we're not monkeys. We're not told what to do very often. So as you get bigger though, you get asked to do more and more things and like I don't want to be deemed difficult, which behind the scenes Sarah is sort of difficult. Oh and, my God, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, we just lost a feature with Inked magazine because she didn't want to show her tattoos. But uh but you know, like we're not difficult. We just have boundaries and, you know, Again, joking aside, like, you know, as you get bigger, you have to say no to more things, and it's hard. It's a really fine balance to figure out how to keep everything in line and still succeed and grow without getting out of control and having no life. You know, we're, we really want to have a life. So, anyway. That's totally so <laughs> respectful. It's so awesome. It's, uh, it's cool to hear that you want to be regular people as well. We do. Able to, people you know. do. We do regular stuff. We grocery shop and that is so regular. And, I ironed this morning. No, you no. did Yes, not. I did. I did. I don't even do that. I can come over and do it. Okay. I wow. really like to iron. Wow. <laughs> Rad. That's I find it very soothing. It's sort of like yoga for people who don't like to do yoga. I don't like yoga either. Mm. Mm. We have a lot in common, you I and know. I. <laughs> <laughs> I like to go for walks once in a while, but that's about it. Okay, I have two more questions. Uh, Halloween is coming up. Uh, do you have any Halloween costume ideas for Peak listeners right now? Because people are having a hard time. Oh, geez. You know what? We're going to probably release the video for Hell next week, and I swear to you, I think it's a great costume idea what we're wearing in the video. We look like greasers from the future. So I'm going to put it out there that Vancouverites should try to put together uh, futuristic greaser outfits oh, for Halloween this year. Good. It's sexy. You get to put your hair up, reveal a little bit more of your face, your ears. Yeah. Apparently that's an attractive thing for people. And then you get to wear uh, tight jeans and pointy shoes, which people love in Vancouver. It's true. It's a win-win. You look sort of like your normal outfit, but then you look dressed up from the future. That is awesome. So you'd have like a laser gun on your hip or something no, like no, that? No, no, no. Grease- oh, yeah, right, because greasers. No, greasers had knives, I thought. Knives. Don't they? What do they look like, like in the future? Like a switchblade? Like a switchblade, but like maybe it has like... Um, a like computer panel on the handle. I- yeah. I- <laughs> like to open iPhone the blade. It's <laughs> like switchblade. It's like... <laughs> there you go. There See, you that's go. awesome. Okay, there yeah, you that's go. That's a good one. Beautiful. And finally, uh, have you voted on the Peak Performance Project yet? Do you have a band? Do you know of any of the 20 bands that are... I do. I know. I've, I'm actually looking at the list over your shoulder, and I'm recognizing a lot of names that I um, know. It's really funny, though. We were talking about how um, Ben Sixton, Six- 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 yeah. Six- how um, our guitar player, Ted, our bass player, Sean, and our old drummer, who is also a very good friend of ours, Rob Turzenoff, play in his band. So it's basically like Ben is the new Tegan and Sarah. There you go. So, <laughs> so gonna, I'm going to take that as a vote for Ben Sixton. Right? I'm going to keep my vote secret. Okay. Okay. Perfect. You can vote totally secretly on the Intertron. It's, yes. It's going to be a big thing. That's a yeah. big thing. Yeah. Cool. All right, Tegan and Sarah, thank you so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. Thanks thank for you. Having and thank you for supporting us so much. Hey, you guys make it easy. It's not difficult. Good anyway. luck giving away all those tickets. We have a we lot of tickets like, to give away. You have a lot of tickets to give away, and like apparently we just we just heard that like when you hear Tegan and Sarah, you call in and you get tickets. And I just want you to write down after we get off the air here, write down my mom's name because she's probably gonna call in and try to get free tickets, <laughs> and that's just not not necessary. She abuses her privileges. But she really does. <laughs> she's she got. She, uh, we told her she has one spot on the guest list, and that she shouldn't abuse that. So awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you. All right, and the album uh, Sainthood is in stores when October twenty seventh. So go spend. Fourteen dollars and buy it. Eleven ninety nine. All right, we love you guys. Bye.